as I was talking to the young man yeah. yes. and his efforts, yeah. I told him, uh, if you look in our video, you will see there's a 5,000 egg hatchery, mm. which we did some road runners with. Yeah. I want him to have that access to be able to breed and increase his numbers. Wow, wow. Hey, you have to pay me for that. Ah, ah, with, ah, his, ah, with, ah, his, ah, with his slaughter, wow. with the marketing, he can leverage off us. And that is the good stories we need to talk about. Wow. To meet each other yeah. and oh share my goodness. and so on. It's sitting, you know the HR is No, don't be emotional. No, no, no. Those wow. who want to share, those who want to get the help we can give in our own way, we don't care which party you belong to. Wow. As long as you are Zimbabwean, whether you are white, you are black, you are yellow, if you want to build the country, let's share our stories, let's leverage off each other. Final day in Zimbabwe. Yes, man. Thank you so much, Mega Bush. You're always welcome. He's the first person that I, I met when I came to this country, and he's the last person that I'm going to meet before I leave this country. It's been a, a great five weeks in Zimbabwe, man. Of course. I'm happy, I'm happy you liked it. And I'll be back. For sure. But Tony is joining us in Ghana, though. Very soon. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that when Tony comes to Ghana, he would definitely don't want to come back to Zimbabwe because Ghana, you actually experience the real Africa. Ah, uh, that's a tricky you, one. No, you, 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 that's a tricky we'll, one. We'll give you Saza, bro. <laughs> <laughs> because it's only Saza that want to make you come back here. But you know, the major problem I have with a lot of places mm. around the world where I've traveled, mm. I love the Zimbabwean weather the most. The what? So, so I don't like places that are too hot. I don't like places that are too cold. Zimbabwe is just fine. In Ghana, it's extremely hot. Yo. So come with t-shirt. Yeah. Don't come. If yeah. you wear clothes like this, you will die in Ghana. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> you see this guy? You see yeah. the jacket he's wearing? He has been wearing that since we came here till now. Because in Ghana, we don't wear jackets. Yeah, but you we're in the cold season now. We're now moving into warmer weather. Megabush, um, yes, there's so many Africans that are watching us. If you have a message for them, what would that message be? Let's open our minds, right? Let's let's um, let's broaden our perspective. Let's get out of our comfort zone, right? Let's learn, learn about other people, other people's culture. Don't have prejudices just because this guy is from Nigeria is a scammer. No, there are a lot of good Nigerian people who have met. Exactly. Zimbabweans are poor. It's not all of us who are poor. Some are. Some are not, but then you find this in every society. So I think as Africans, we need to maybe open our mind a bit more. Mm. And the, the best thing that I've found as a solution for this is travel. Yep, yep. So the more you travel, the more you experience. Exactly. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's the thing where I, I can't, you, you know the experience you have. Yeah. You can't share that with me. So sometimes you need to see by yourself. And this is what I keep on telling people. You know, when I came here, a lot of people have been saying that you are paid to say whatever you're saying. And I keep on telling them that travel. I mean, when you travel, you understand what I'm saying. You, you might think you have the worst country, but to me, I mean, not everything is perfect in here. But I think the country is doing well in terms of um, infrastructures that I have seen here. Welcome to the city of Bulawayo. It's my first time in this beautiful city. I love the fact that when I was in Harare, I thought I've seen the widest road ever. But I think this city got more and better wide roads 
done um, Harare and listen if somebody ever told me that this is how a second largest city of Zimbabwe is gonna look like I would definitely not believe it but it's really worth it to come in here man like for real I feel like because um, see if I take you to certain countries eh you see now and it's a thing whereby I might not know that if, if I'm just confined to my Zimbabwe. So if I can't travel, there are a lot of other means I can use to educate myself. There's YouTube. Open, open your mind. Open your mind. See, you see our continent from a positive you perspective. You know, uh, I've been in Zimbabwe and I'll say that I went through a lot of challenges to create the content that I'm creating right now that most of you are enjoying. Right. Like the challenges are I many. I, 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 I was first head. You don't need to tell <laughs> to, me. I to, know. To the standard, even Mega I, I don't want to be a YouTuber. I can tell you this. I don't want. <laughs> After seeing the it's struggles. Like <laughs> <laughs> you know, even the, the car that the person that drove us around Zimbabwe, people thought they paid us. But if only they knew the story, okay. No, I, I mean, we, we paid. $3,000 just for him to drive us around. And you know, this happened when we found ourselves with him. With, you, you're the one. I think Megabush got us into that trouble. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> no, Charlie. But, oh, anyway. See, okay. no, Megabush got into that trouble. Okay, okay. So there, there, okay. There's this guy. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Ah, I'll take it. But it, it's all good. I mean, um, for me, I always say that it's the end result that matters. Um, and I'm so glad that I came to Zimbabwe. I believe that a lot of you are going to enjoy the videos that we're coming up with because, see, the videos that we did... I think we've done a lot in Zimbabwe. We've been to almost every corner in this country. I can't wait to release all these videos, especially videos from Vic Falls, Nyanga, Lake Kariba. Yeah. And the most important one is Manapos. Of course, of course. I, I, I think this country has got a lot to offer. Yep. Mark the farmer. Yes, Mark the Farmer. Ma Mark the Farmer. <laughs> you see? This is Mark the Farmer. I don't know if you guys saw the video. When, when we were colonized, what did the white people do when they came to this country? They came and grabbed the land. So, I believe, I may be wrong, but I believe that there's plenty of land, even in the rural areas. Anyone can still do something there and still make money. Slowly, slowly. I'm not saying we all become farmers, we're making millions, but I'm talking about survival. So land is the most important thing. Without land, you are nothing. Um, he's the first guy who actually interviewed when I came in here. And um, I believe that a lot of people will enjoy that episode. If you haven't seen it, just go and check it out. And my one and only millionaire uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of this phrase before? Africans. Have you heard it before? Yes, yes, I have. Um, and to a very large extent, it's associated with mediocrity, with uh, uh, success being inspired by Europe, uh, and not feeding our own people, not being self-sufficient, and poverty. And that is what we are trying to get away from. And as a farmer yourself, what do you think is the way forward? I think we need to come together uh, and uh, have servant leadership and be able to listen to each other. And if people can just hope to do something positive for their country, if people stop being selfish and want to control large chunks beyond what they can consume or creating reasonable wealth for your family, you tend to have those who want to have everything in Africa and those who have nothing. We just need to have uh, business people political leaders, uh, church leaders, who don't want to amass everything to themselves, who are wanting to share the cake with others, who are the concept of growing together, uh, the concept of knowing that if you are privileged to be at the top, you need to have other people surrounding you to make even your business stronger and share the cake with others. Your story actually blew a lot of people's mind. They couldn't believe it. C can I say you're a millionaire? Wow. I don't know. I, I just don't know. <laughs> yes, I would say so. <laughs> and are we heading to billion, billion anytime soon? 
No, I think maybe two, three generations. It's not a, a run, a race. We hope that our children and our children's children will add more value to this enterprise. And I think real value grows over time. And for me, I believe that you create value, then the money follows. And people were complaining, stop abusing the word millionaire. Because it's art. What's it called? Art RTG? RTG. Ah, but ah, ah. Oh, well, Charlie, please. <laughs> People are like, stop abusing it. And why is it that your country is so polarized with politics? Um, Did I, I? I got to know you from someone from the UK. UK. Yes. yes. But they're calling me an agent. That um, and he is also an agent. And we decided to tell the story to favor the current government. And I'm like, I don't even know anyone. I just met him from someone. Yes. Okay, um, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let him answer first. Um, from experience, uh, because uh, with the major shift which happened after the land reform, mm. of course there was a bit of grabbing of assets and so on, but our people were never used to mainstream uh, being industrialists, being business people, besides being owning buses and uh, farm shops and so uh, small shops and so on. So we were groomed to become workers, to become executives in the private sector and so on. And you only know part of the story. So some people, it's very difficult for them to accept the reality that some there are people out there who are creating things, who are building things, and who also want to help other people to be built. So. And of course, when an economy is going through the kind of changes Zimbabwe is going through, you find that there is quick money, there is people who are opportunists, who, 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 yes, who benefit from things like cronyism and corruption and so on. Remember what I said about if there was anything I could change about Zimbabweans, I would change our mindset. No matter how hard the government will try now, there's always somebody who's going to find a loophole, exploit it, and then make those uh, tries or gains fruitless. And then somebody else is gonna like prosper big. Mm. And that's not the person's problem because we've had to deal with like very badly dealt hands for so long mm. that all everyone is thinking about is if it's not gonna be me and my people, then But in Zimbabwe, I would argue the point that corruption is driven by private sector, by monopolies, by groups of people who own large-scale industries and so on, who corruptly induce people in government who don't earn a lot of money, like in these current circumstances, to give them permits corruptly and so on and things like that. So a lot of the talk is based on ignorance, and uh, of course, like the immature politics, mm. uh, which is uh, which is sadly happening, especially on the internet. Uh, especially unfortunately, <laughs> yes, especially a, a lot of uh, the young people <laughs> you have not experienced the <clears throat> thing you did when you come to my farm. Mm. I'm not the best farm in Zimbabwe. There's a lot more, and unfortunately. Honest business people tend to end up shying away <coughs> and not wanting media and not wanting to say the truth. Of course, the issue of a millionaire, that is private land. It's in an agri-residential area. <laughs> it's 300,000 square meters. And that's not the only significant piece of land or property we own. So it's unfortunate because there is a certain characterization of flamboyance of driving funky cars and speaking loudly on the internet to project yourself as yeah. a, in Zimbabwe there's a old called binga <laughs> <laughs> which is a synonym for a rich flamboyant big person big boy, big boy. Yeah. but a real business person when you rule you do the real things they humble you and from where I come from, the concept of social entrepreneurship, I kept talking of, it's coming from the heart. And my success, my wealth is seen through the younger people who we are helping, the people we are going through mentorship. And by the way, from the blog, you, from your blog, mm. there has been a lot of renewed 
impetus for us to start a, a business masterclass, wow. to start a mentorship program. A round of applause. Uh, number number one student. Student. <laughs> <laughs> Ask people. A round that. of applause. And this is just five days ago. It's three days ago. Yeah. Wow, already. Yes, and there, there's just as many people coming on our Shamiso Farm Facebook page. And in the next coming weeks, you will see us. We are already talking to the number of professionals we are working with and so on probably by December to start proper master classes for the business of farming, the business of agribusiness, the mentorship, the walking through the people to start in their own circumstances and so on. And there is a lot of stories who will show up there. People have taken breeding stock from us, people who are working on waiting for the abbot to start slaughtering and so on and things like wow. that to help them with the wow. marketing because this doesn't help to just produce without creating the market and making sure the farmers get the fair price. So yeah, watch out, come to Shamiso Farm. Should I Facebook use your page. email? Yes. There? yes. Because you know people were asking me for your number and I'm like, I can't give your number because if I put your number, you won't sleep. <laughs> yes, true. <laughs> you true, sleep. True. Uh, you I sleep. mean, I'm getting calls across the world from people I know, from people I don't know. People have gone to the diaspora while planning to go come back like this young man <laughs> and so on. So, yes, uh, we, now, you, 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 now you, you did a good thing for us. Wow. And uh, we, we are hoping to next year to invite you back to see if a lot of people they have started their you know, own I, ideas I, I want their the own cannabis businesses. story I'll come back for the cannabis story <laughs> yes, yes and your invitation to Ghana we we waiting for it I don't know we might to we might to talk about that. Mark you want to add anything to yes. it yes um my experience is you know growing up here it was more like we were pushed towards careers where you work, get a salary, professional careers. Mm. And I was part of them. I mean, part of that uh, mentality of getting those careers and aim for the middle class, right? So even when I went to the UK, it was more like I needed to get a very good job in IT in my case. But after 10 years, I spoke to two people that really changed my mind. And it was all about entrepreneurship. Because when you work, you set a peg or a target where you cannot surpass that, right? But when you're an entrepreneur and you do it well, the sky is the limit. So this has really changed my perception. So now coming to a lot of people that speak negatively about, uh, about Zimbabwe, I think partly it's because they haven't been exposed to uh, how powerful entrepreneurship is. So everyone is aiming to be on the middle class. So when they get to see the, the, you know, like the, the opportunities that you get as an entrepreneur, I'm sure they'll see the light. But unfortunately, because they are stuck with that mindset, yep. there is no way they are going to give you uh, respect for the, you know, the amount of work that you've put in, oh. you know, the effort that you've put in. There's no respect. It's always, uh, you know, someone. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> or you got a bit of money here. <laughs> and even me, I get it. Now, my land is you know, way smaller. But already they said, they said because you have two chickens. <laughs> <laughs> they said because you have there two chickens. You think that I, talk. <laughs> I respect. I, I said on Twitter. Point. I'm like, oh my <laughs> yes. god, yeah. I'm coming for me. <laughs> you know, They're like, coming for me. Since, you know? I came, since I came to this country, from the first day to now, mm -hmm. I've been attacked like so badly. Like to the extent that I got so tired. I'm like, I need to ignore these people. But some of the things I just want to type, I, and I'm like, you know what? Just let it go. Just no, let it go you know, and focus on what you're doing. So. You know, Maya, unfortunately, people speak without knowledge. I mean, I've traveled with you. You know, we've gone through a lot of troubles. But you know, the pain that I feel, uh, that, that I feel when mm. someone says, oh, you guys were paid for this. Oh, you guys were paid for this. Exactly. It's unbelievable. G give an, as an example, when we went to Nyanga, <laughs> the national park, we took our drone up. <laughs> now, it was six o'clock already. Now, these guys are saying we need to pay $300 yes. before they allow us to go out. And because we don't have the $300, they lock the gates and we're <laughs> stuck in a forest. And now, a Zimbabwean watched that video and said, oh my God, Nyanga is so beautiful. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we're stuck in a forest from 6 to 7. Yeah. We couldn't have access to phone call mm -hmm. because I need to call somebody to bail us. <laughs> and at the end of the day, they tried and tried. I think 30 minutes later, they were able to make a call and the guy said, allow them to go. 
imagine us going through all this struggle and you think we've been paid. See, Masingo, Grace Zimbabwe, taking a shot in Grace Zimbabwe. It took us three days oh my goodness. <laughs> to get access to shoot. The access to shoot, we have to make like 10,000 calls, man. And don't forget that where we are, we have to pay ourselves. And the night, everybody is like $242. Thumbs three. And people think that I've been paid to do this. This is the country that I think I've spent so much money to promote the country. And it's sad. But I, I'm, I'm also going to tell the Zanu PF, if you guys have to give me money, give me. So that, <laughs> so that, so that I, I, I'll know that I've been paid. <laughs> As I was talking to the young man yeah. and his efforts, yeah. I told him, uh, if you look in our video, you'll see there's a 5,000 egg hatchery, mm. which we did some road runners with. Yeah. I want him to have that access to be able to breed and increase his numbers. Wow, wow. Hey, you have to pay me for that. Wow. With, the, <laughs> who, who <laughs> with his slaughter, wow. with the marketing, he can leverage off us. And that is the good stories we need to talk about. Wow. To meet each other yeah. and Oh share my goodness. And so on. It's sitting, you know the don't HR is No, don't be emotional. No, no, no. So what we do now is we take these uh, eggs and we put them in the incubator. Hmm. You have incubator here? No, it's not here because here we don't have electricity yet. Okay. Yeah, so it's in a different location. So we put the eggs in the incubator and then they come out as chicks after 21 days. So this is how I've managed to expand to about 1,500 chickens. How, how many um, hens did you start with? I started, off, I started off with 70, wow. 70 hens, wow. seven zero. And I managed to grow that to about 1,000, uh, 1,500. In a period of? Um, I'll say in about uh, four or five months. Those who want to share, those who want to get the help we can give in our own way, we don't care which party you belong to. Wow. As long as you are Zimbabwean, whether you are white, you are black, you are yellow, if you want to build the country, let's share our stories, let's leverage off each other and make the money Ma, don't together. Don't cry a man, bro. Ah. Yeah. No, I mean, Thank you. I don't see the reason why these leaders, they, you know, they must sit down and try to, you know, encourage each other. I don't know what's happening with these leaders. What, what is it? Can you give me a clue what happens, you know? I don't, I don't, I don't even know myself. Yeah, oh, it's not the the or, or, or African Union. What do they really discuss? Do they discuss about Africa as Africans or, or what? I don't know. Or they, they discuss about, like, you know, I've got this fifth dome, I've got, you know, what, what do they really discuss? To be honest with you, and I say this sincerely, I don't know of any African leader who is in need of money. They're beyond that. They're beyond that. And I'm telling you the truth. You know, if they are, maybe a few. But the majority of them, they're beyond that. They really just want to see Africa move forward. You take, for example, um, this country where we are. You have opposition that goes to Washington two, three times a year to push for sanctions to continue. You look at that situation and say, do they understand the machinery that puts sanctions together? It's a deep web of a machinery that even if, say, opposition wants to win the next election, it's gonna take the entire five years to undo the effects and to undo the, the system that was put in place for sanctions. Mm. So that means even you opposition, you're going to still suffer from the sanctions. So it's that lack of understanding of what really matters at the, at the end of the day that uh, uh, is, is, is of concern to me. So to answer your question about African leadership, it, it's my general feeling that the average African leader wants to do the right thing. But they're not doing the right thing. They're doing the best they can under very difficult conditions. Remember what I said, 
the average African country is spending a third to 40 percent, some up to 60 percent of their GDP on loan repayment. That alone, son, it's like saying, you take 60 percent of my lunch and then you wonder why I can't gain weight. Good. It's time to say goodbye. It's a good thing it's never last, eh? Yes, man. But it's been awesome, man. It's been good having you here. Mega Bush. <laughs> Tony <laughs> Mega Bush. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Lala. <laughs> Mugabe son. I'm telling you. this part. <laughs> in China, man cannot live by one girl alone. What do you mean? But in Zimbabwe, <laughs> we live by one woman alone. alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you mean by it's a lie? It's a lie. How, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Good to see you. We so, hope you come back as early as you can. As early as I can, yeah? I'll be back. And anyway. bring us Ghana goodies. Ghana men. I'll, I'll bring you Ghana specific. boyfriend, man. Yes, please. Which one do you want? I want age, a, age limits. I want a tall, handsome Ghana man. Age broad limits. Broad shoulders. Age. And he also has to be between 33 to 37 years old. That'll be awesome. So, if you're a Ghana man out there looking for a wife, I have an economy ticket, but I still need to use a business lounge. Thank you so much, Traverse, for making this possible. Traverse is actually a travel and tour company right here in Zimbabwe. I think I interviewed the owner and she decided to let me enjoy this before I fly out. It's time to relax, it's time to enjoy. So, yeah, come along with me. Let's go check out how it looks like in there. Thank you so much. I think I've lived in Zimbabwe so much that I'm super excited that I'm going back home. Oh my god! Excuse me. 